welcome back to County Line TV. Uh, just to let you guys in, uh, we're going to have some variety in the next couple of videos. This car is going for an alignment, and then I have to put some taillights on it. They mentioned the lack of taillights to me at the last event. Whoops. We're going to do that. But after that, we got some variety coming. We're going to be working on my dad's car. Uh, got a couple of things to do to that. He wants it to have like a hood and a hatch and bumpers and stuff. So we're going to try to tackle that. But we also have handbrake lines for him and a handbrake. Um, so we're going to try to get him a handbrake set up. Uh, after that, that car will be a ripper because it's it's got plenty of, uh, it's like it's healthy. It's got plenty of power. It's got angles, coils, welded diff arms everything like it's a pretty squared away car just no handbrake so we're gonna get that done and then we'll probably get him a steering wheel and stuff soon too we'll probably see a video on justin's rx7 soon we're uh we're trying to get that thing to run and then i'm thinking that we're gonna start doing some videos with our our pit vehicles and stuff all these uh chinese quads it comes from china pit bikes and stuff like that i think we've got some pretty cool content thought up for that but just a little bit of an update. Uh, there's gonna be a lot coming up, but for right now, let's get my oil cooler, which you can see right there. Uh, let's get a fan on that, because obviously uh, it'll get some cooling in the position it's at right behind that vent. It'll get some cooling while it's moving, but if it's not moving, it needs to have some air pulling through it. So let's get right to it. So this right here is the fan that we're going to be working with. It's just going to slap right on there with the mounts supplied. Uh, pretty simple stuff. I'll go ahead and rip it apart here and show you. Uh, it comes with these clips that slide into the slots here. And then it comes with these like one-way zip ties that you just slide in with the spring. And then it's got little uh, rubber pads that protect the cooling fins from getting messed up by the fan. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap that on and then uh, show you what it looks like on there. It, again, we're up in this tight spot where I can't really film much, but I'm just gonna give you a before and after, I guess. Now that the fan is securely held on there, uh, we're gonna wire this the same way that you saw me wire my water uh, tank pump thing. Where you want to go? Anyway, uh, the, the, my radiator and tire spray thing, uh, the way I wired that and the way I wired CJ's fans. So it's really important in pretty much any electrical item you add to a car, uh, you should add a, a fuse and a relay, or I like to kill two birds with one stone and use a fused relay. Um, you've seen me do this before, but I think it's really important that all car guys know this, so I'll cover it one more time. Uh, you can read the... Uh, print there on the top of the relay and what that translates to is that your black and white wires go to positive and ground we'll ground that and we'll also ground one of the wires off a fan and then uh, that is going to be going to a switch which in this case I'm actually going to tap into the power that's going to my radiator fans and uh, I'm going to use an inline splice there and this is going to go to my radiator fan hot wire and since this is just triggering a relay it doesn't take any juice really so it's not going to affect that circuit on the car really at all so that'll be okay for me to do that and then uh, the blue wire is going to go to the battery positive and the red wire is going to go to the actual uh, fan the wire that powers the fan i'm gonna get that wired up we'll be right back so that's all wired up now and i'm sorry i couldn't show you guys more it's just the whole working in the wheel well thing like I know I preached forever about how I needed a lift or mini tripod so I could work under cars. Well, now I have a lift and I have multiple mini tripods, but when I work in a wheel well, there's not much I can do. Anyway, it's wired, it's mounted, everything's ready to go. I'm going to start the car, let it warm up. My fans come on at like 150 degrees. I try to catch it right before the uh, thermostat that opens at 160, supposedly. I don't know. <laughs> I have a 160 T-stat, but I was told there's already one in the car. We'll figure that out when we figure that out. But anyway, I'm going to let it warm up to 150 degrees and see if that fan comes on with the other fans come on. It should. I tested my wiring. Everything looks right. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. And then I guess that's going to be it for this episode. Going to be a real short one. Psych! You guys thought this episode was going to be that short, didn't you? <laughs> Something's broke. So I was testing the car, and I thought that I was just going to end the episode and test the car off camera. 
But while assessing the car, I think I found out that I've had a hardware failure with one of my fans. I think one of my fans is broken. I'll take you guys off of here and I'll show you. So on the Corvette here, we have uh, fan number one and fan number two, right? I don't know which one's which in the tune, like in the ECU, but there's two fans. And that fan comes on, but this fan doesn't. And this is the fan where you can see I use an inline splice to go over to the relay and the wheel well over there. So, but this fan doesn't come on, but the fan on the oil cooler comes on. So there's like power going to this. Whenever that fan comes on, there's power going to this that triggers the relay over there. So I don't know, uh, I don't know what's going on. So I've got HP, HP tuners pulled up. And if we go into the system thing here, and you see we have some stuff about fans. Well, this number right here, which I don't know if you can see my cursor. This number right here, the on temp with the AC on was set at 185. So I adjusted it down to 150, even though the on engine coolant temp number was already 150. I think because this was met, but this wasn't that the fan didn't come on. I can't explain why the other fan came on, the one for the oil cooler, but I'm just hoping that maybe that I had a little bit of software malfunction here. But I can't be certain. So I'm gonna dump this tune with that slight revision made. I also lowered my uh, rev limiter down a little bit on this revision. Um, I It was revving out to like 6,300. Felt a little high to me. Um, there's no Cayman Springs or anything in this engine, so. I just knocked it back to 6,000. I don't think it's gonna hurt me any. And the car hardly ever gets that high anyway. I, I run out of torque versus grip that high in the RPM range, so I never see it. But uh, in first gear I do, and it, it just bothered me. So I just lowered it, all gears, back down to 6,000. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna dump this in. We'll see if that fan comes on. of things that are wrong my obd2 port now doesn't have power so that's just freaking dandy let me check some fuses i'll be right back well fortunately or unfortunately however you want to look at it it appears that it was just my uh fuse for my diagnostics port was blown so we're going to try this again and hopefully it'll let me connect to the car this time Okay, it's right. So I really think that the fan is just bad. We're just going out on a limb here with the whole uh, possible software fault. Uh, I think the fan is actually blown because the other fan comes on and we're using the same power source. Like the power source is supposed to power the fan, is powering the relay, so like it should, it should work from the standpoint of electricity getting there. So I don't think this is gonna help anything, unfortunately. However, it's worth a shot. I want to try it because I don't really want to have to swap my fans out. But I gotta have, I gotta have all my fans working, unfortunately. But it says this is a uh, done writing, so I'm going to go ahead and cycle the key, start it, and see what happens. You guys probably can't see in here too well, unfortunately. Let me get it at least aimed in the right spot. Uh, yeah, you probably can't see in there very well. But uh, we're gonna try one last thing before we totally give up. And I'm gonna take these wires that I have attached to a battery and see if it'll turn that freaking fan on. Let's see what I'm doing. Need someone to like hold the light for me. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have that luxury right now. Ah, ah. Well, 
folks. It's not a hardware thing. Well, folks, I think at this point there's a couple of steps that I can take. Uh, one being, well, I've got this unplugged. Uh, let it warm up and put the meter on it and see if it's getting power. Because it's got to have hot and ground. I can also make sure that that wire is grounded. And I know which one's the ground because I'm already using the hot to power that relay. We know that's working. So, uh, let me go get the meter. We need to make sure that the white wire on this, which is it's weird that it's the white wire. But we need to make sure this white wire is grounded. And we need to make sure that... I already know that blue wire gets power. It almost has to be a ground thing. It almost has to be. So, let's, uh, let's grab the meter see what we can find out. All right, guys, I got my uh, fluke meter hanging here off of the amp clamp because that's what you're supposed to do with them, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to, uh, I got a little clamp on this lead, and I'm going to clamp that to somewhere that I think should be for sure grounded on the chassis. Oh, this subframe ought to do. I need something thin. It's just a wire clamp. Uh, <laughs> well, how about that? Nothing too thin under here. Anyway, uh... Whatever, I'll just, I'll just attach it there. Work paid for those clamps anyway. And then I'm going to take this plug that goes in the fan. White wire goes on this side. Hmm. Let me touch somewhere else. Our ground isn't very groundy. What do you know about that? Well, I figured it out. I spliced in the ground and the ground wire. This wasn't grounded. I noticed it was getting 13 and a half volts when I had my hot lead in the plug for my ground on the chassis, but only a couple volts when I had my ground on the ground part of the plug. So I jumped in a ground and it was blowing hard. guys that's working now got that ground into a bolt that goes to the uh, subframe and uh we're just gonna go ahead and say that the moral of the story today is just because one fan's working doesn't mean they both are i'm assuming that bottom fan probably hasn't worked since i've owned this car <laughs> so don't ever assume anything and if you're struggling with your cooling system triple check everything because that's probably been a big part of my problem with this car overheating so bad this whole time. And I just had no idea because I thought it was good. It wasn't good. That's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell your mom to subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.